What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today I'm finally reviewing Gen V. So without further ado, let's begin. This show is a direct spin-off to The Boys, and when I first heard that they were going to make a spin-off, I thought, really? I don't think that's going to be as good as The Boys. But the more I thought about it, and, you know, the amount of characters, because there's more soups in the comics than there are on the show, or at least the ones that are introduced, so I figured, huh, maybe it could work. But I didn't really seem to find anyone that was based on the Gen V thing, so I figured, oh, it's probably something original, but it's in The Boys universe with the whole soup stuff but I still gave it a chance and when I saw the trailers I thought oh it's okay it's all right but I still thought you know I'll still give it a watch and whatever probably won't be as good as the boys but I'm sure it will be like decent at best and oh boy I was wrong this show is really good like I didn't think it'd be just as good as the boys of course it's written by the same people so I'm not surprised that I liked it just as much and I am going to get into spoilers, so if you haven't seen Gen V, I highly recommend you go watch it. Especially because there are some things that will lead up to The Boys Season 4. Because I'm pretty sure The Boys Season 4 is going to explain some things or show things that you have no idea what's going on. Because you'll have to watch Gen V first. So, hopefully this is what the spinoff does. Like, I think this is what a spinoff should do. And I'm pretty sure the Arrowverse kind of did this, because... Especially with the Infinite Crisis event, like, where they had, you know, the Infinite Crisis episode, like... It didn't focus on one show. Each episode was on a different show. Like, the episode with Kevin Conroy was on the Batwoman show. Another episode was on The Flash. Kind of like that. So, I believe what the boys' timeline order is, you watch the first three seasons, then this show, then season four, and possibly Gen V season two, which I just read that's coming out in 2025. So, we're getting a lot of superhero content in 2025, more than in 2024. But hey, at least we're getting the boys' season four in 2024, so that's better than nothing. But anyway, let's get into the show. Again, major spoilers. Go watch the show if you haven't. It's really good. The first thing I'll discuss and get out of the way are the cameo slash guest star appearances from The Boys Show. This is kind of what spin-off shows usually do. They usually bring in a side character that people usually tend to forget and bring them in the spin-off when it's like, okay, we want to see the main character in the spin-off. Which they kind of do do that, but at the same time, they also bring in some main characters from The Boys Show, like A-Train, Ashley, and The Deep. For, like, the side characters that appeared, it was the guy who directed Dawn of the Seven and the news reporter guy. There's Soldier Boy, who appears in more of an illusion in Kate's mind, who was one of the main characters. So, it's not really Soldier Boy, just letting anyone know. But, it's great to see Jensen Ackles as Soldier Boy once again. James Gunn, please make him the new Batman of the DCU. He's already voicing him in the Tomorrowverse. Please make him Batman live action. He's perfect for the role. I swear, if you do not fucking do that, I will boycott... Batman Brave and the Bold, the movie, not the awesome cartoon. I'm joking about the boycott thing, but please, James Gunn, make him Batman of your cinematic universe. And of course, Homelander and Billy Butcher make a cameo at the end of the last episode, hyping you up for The Boys Season 4. And we're introduced to Tech Knight, and we're not, when he said his name was Tech Knight, I'm like, oh my god, tell me they got the thing from the comic for his little brain tumor that makes him want to fuck every hole. Please tell me. And they did it. They do it. That's all I ever wanted from Tech Knight's appearance, because you got to have Tech Knight in the show. Now all we need is Jack from Jupiter and Mr. Marathon. While the other cameos felt like, you know, hey, they're there, that's cool and all, that's awesome, especially Homelander and Billy Butcher and Soldier Boy. But Victoria Newman's appearance feels very important to the plot, especially in the episode she's in. Especially because what she was given at the end of the episode she was in could lead to what's going to happen in The Boys Season 4. So this is what I mean that you need to watch Gen V first before The Boys Season 4 comes out. I would discuss what she is given right now, but we haven't gotten to the main characters yet. And I figured talking about that topic will be way better for, well, talking about the characters and the plot of the show rather than, you know, the guest appearance section. So now let's talk about the characters. The main character is Mari, who is the one with the blood powers. There's Emma, who has shrinking powers somewhat, but unfortunately, she has to make herself throw up in order to shrink. So, yeah, her powers kind of suck, but she's actually my favorite character, and you very sympathize with her when you watch the show. There's Andre, who has his moments, but in the beginning, I actually really liked him, and I think he had his moments at the end of the, the, the season. There's Jordan, who I didn't like at first, but, you know, actually grew on me as the show went on. 
And then there's Kay and Sam and Luke, who's not on here right now. Luke is Golden Boy. I think we'll, I think talk, we'll talk about, about Golden Boy first. first. Mari. Mari is the main protagonist of this show, and she gets her powers for the first time during her first period, and she accidentally kills both of her parents, and her little sister witnessed this and calls her a monster. And ever since then, her sister was left for adoption. They were left separated because Mari decided to go to this place that would help her get her to control her powers. And when she has them fully controlled and pretty much becomes a superhero, she will go to a sister to prove that she's not a monster. She tries do doing this throughout the season, but her sister doesn't want anything to do with her. When she first meets Golden Boy and the rest of his friends and his girlfriend Kate, she goes to this party with them and has fun until Audrey tries to be interested, well, kind of riz up this girl and, you know, show her a magic trick, a magic trick. But then it accidentally slits another woman's throat and the others leave because they don't want to get caught because uh, they're going to curfew. But Marie Mari stays because I feel like I'm screwing up her name. I'm not pronouncing it right. But anyway, Marie? Yeah, Marie. Marie stays because she sees that this is how a similar way how her mother died. And she wants to save this girl's life, and she ends up doing that by preventing her blood from spilling any further. And of course, it gets all over the news and stuff. The school knows about this. The principal, played by Mr. Krabs, expels her, and she gets mad at her friend Emma, who is my favorite character in this show, and we'll talk about her next, but we guys still gotta talk about um, Marie. When she decides to go back and stand up for herself, she sees Golden Boy kill the principal, and Golden Boy thinks she's in on this, but she has no idea what's going on. And Golden Boy tries to kill her until Jordan comes in and tries to fight him. And then she gets outside. Audrey steps in. Golden Boy sees what's going on. And then he gets, he says his goodbyes to his best friend. And then he kills himself. And everyone thinks that, uh, um, not Audrey, um... Marie is, like, the hero to stop Golden Boy, and everyone thinks he just went rogue in some shit. You know, they're covering it up, basically. And this makes her popular by everyone in the school, and, of course, she unfortunately has to lie and be famous. Pretty much just tell bullshit up, and she knows this is not the truth, this is not her real self. She has to lie that her parents are still alive to the public because she, she knows that no one wants to hear the real truth because, you know, the people who you know, product these things for the soups or assholes. She also has this rivalry with Jordan, but literally a few episodes later, they actually start to like each other, and it was actually something I did not expect. Like, I thought they were just not like each other. I thought her and RJ would be a thing, but no, her and Jordan, I actually kind of like that better because, like, you know, nemesis, or not nemesis, enemies turn and slowly turn to friends, but then into lovers. Like, that's good writing in my book. It's good character development with these two. You feel bad for Mari because, like, she just wants to reunite with her sister and prove to her that she's not a monster, like, because for all this time, she's been holding regret that she accidentally murdered her parents, and she's afraid that what she did was not an accident, like, she's afraid, so, like, because there's one episode where the one there in Kate's mind, she's facing her demons, basically, along with Jordan and Audrey, which we'll get to theirs later when we talk about them. Overall, Mari is a well written character, so now we'll get to my favorite character, Emma. In my opinion, she's the most sympathetic character, because literally everyone is just mean to this girl. I mean, not everyone here, like, they're all nice to her, especially Sam, until the very end of the episode. Well, not the end of the episode, uh, until the end of the season. Her powers basically suck, so basically she can shrink herself down, but in order to do that, she has to p make herself throw up, and... That's very really upsetting, and when she's telling this one person, this bitch, like, you know, how she does it, she thinks that she's going to keep the secret, but ends up telling the whole school, and everyone makes fun of her for it. It's like, and the f person who told everyone is like, oh shit, and all. It's like, really? Like, literally, what made you think she wanted to know that? It's like, are you fucking stupid, you stupid bitch? Like, we haven't even seen this bitch's powers, like, if she even has any. Like... And she has this friend who has a rat for a tail, which is gross as hell. It's like, fuck both of you. And she tries to apologize, but Emma's, but they're secretly filming Emma 
just so no one thinks that this bitch is a bad person when you clearly are a bad person. And what's worse is this one guy who has a small dick tries to, well, pretty much bangs Emma, but pretty much, you know, he wants her to shrink down and, you know, basically ride on his dick. And it's like, wow, this guy kind of just used her. It's like, wow, poor Emma. Like, literally in the first two episodes, poor Emma. And she doesn't catch a break either. Her mom is basically Starlight's mom. Just as bad. Just uses her daughter for attention that she's a soup. Pretty much both of their moms. So her mom and Starlight's mom are cunts, basically. Now we'll talk about Audrey. So Audrey is Golden Boy's best friend, and his father wants him to be the next soup. I forgot the superhero name that his father was, but, you know, his father wants his son to be just like him. But with everything going on after Golden Boy's death, Golden Boy tells him, uh, your father's in on it. And he doesn't know what that means, and... Later, he finds out about this, a statue of his father. He has a video for him and Kate about what the school has been planning and that Sam is was a part of it, that he was doing test subjects on. But Luke, who was Golden Boy, was told that his brother had killed himself. Audrey tells Emma this and has her shrink down and, you know, try to get Sam out. Well, first, he needs to go into Brink's office and find out if Sam was really still alive. And he was, and he took a picture of it so he could show Emma, because he knows she she has shrinking powers. And she does that, and Sam catches her, and they have a conversation about just random stuff. Basically, they seem to get along. But back to Audrey. So, Audrey, throughout, seems like a good character. You actually really like him. At first, he, like, seems like really one of the more chill characters. Like, you actually like him. He's really a nice guy. Until we get to him sleeping with Kate. And we find out that he's been doing this for a while. That's where I'm like, bro, are you kidding me? And literally, when we find out what Jordan did, you know, because... So, we'll get to Jordan now. So, there's a flashback. So, the episode where we go to Kate's mind, there's a scene where we go to Jordan's, a flashback in Jordan's mind that everyone sees. And we see that he knocked out Golden Boy because he was about to attack uh, the principal at first. And, you know, literally what he did could have been all prevented. And Audrey is scolding him for it. And I'm like, bro, you literally fucked your best friend's girlfriend. And he's dead. Like, again, this was before he died, but still. It's like, bro, you are the one to talk. Of course, after his father gets a, a seizure or a heart attack, he actually, I actually started to like him a bit, a lot more. So, at the end of the, so pretty much Audrey's character was good at the beginning, but started to be unlikable in the middle, but at the end, I actually started to like him again. Jordan at first is someone who I didn't like, but as the epi- as not the episodes, as the season went on, I actually started to like him, especially when him and Mari, or Marie, I mean, I keep saying Mari for some reason, when Jordan and Marie started to be a thing, I actually started to like them. Also, Jordan has this power where he can gender swap himself. It's a little weird of a power. Like, if, like, in the beginning, he's, like, mad that he's not in the top five, but I'm like, Really? Your powers have you gender swap? Like, that's kind of lame compared to Kate's powers, where if she touches you, she could literally tell you to do something. Speaking of Kate, Kate turns out to be the main antagonist. When everyone tries to find Sam because he's on the loose and he tries to kill the doctor who's doing test subjects on him or test on him, turns out literally everything cuts to black and they have no memory of it. And we find out that Kate was the one who wiped their memory and not this dickbag named Rufus who, uh, Marie, yeah, yeah, Marie, I keep, okay, every time I stutter or mess up when I say Marie's name, I'm thinking, like, did I say it right? So, sorry about that. So, Marie actually made Rufus' dick explode because, you know, she has this blood power and, you know, with boners and all, if you're a guy. (laughs) But anyways, um, his dick explodes. He had it coming because he was about to rape her. And at first, everyone thinks it's Rufus because he has that power with mind erasing and shit. But um, turns out it was Kate all along. So she has more than just the power of touching someone and tells them what to do. And this was before the episode where they go into Kate's mind and learn pretty much everything about her and what she did. 
she pretty much manipulated everyone, and, you know, she wants forgiveness, but they all just don't trust her, but, you know, they're still, because pretty much she's pretty much the one who has something to do with the main woman who's in charge of the school after Brink's death, who is the principal. It also turns out that that woman happens to hate soups with a grudge and wants to create a virus that could kill them all. Because back in season one on the plane, her daughter and husband were on that plane and Homelander, she knows Homelander has something to do with it, so she despises soups ever since. And she tries to go to Grace Malley about it, but Grace Malley declines, but secretly she had Billy Butcher listen in on this woman and she's like, did you get any of that? Keep an eye on her. So, yeah, we all knew Grace Malley wouldn't turn that down, but she had to pretend. Kate makes this woman kill herself at the end, and Sam is on Kate's side now, even though she's kind of the reason this is all happening still, and her why her old, his older brother Luke kind of killed himself, because he believed that Sam was dead. So yeah, this Kate's a bitch, even though she's very pretty. So now I'll talk about Sam. So Sam throughout, like, at first I actually really liked Sam. But as he started to become bad, I started to dislike him, especially when he was very rude to Emma. Like, bruh, that's like the first person who's ever been nice to you. And like, he's going crazy, he's seeing her as a puppet and shit through his illusions or whatever, and he's seeing his dead brother, and his dead brother is telling him what he's doing is wrong. But then he has Kate erase all of his feelings, and he feels good about it. And also, I forgot to mention, Sam's powers literally are literally are literally Black Noir's powers, like superhuman strength, literally unstoppable. So this is where I saw some videos where people theorized that Sam is the new Black Noir. And to be honest, I actually could see that, like him with no emotion, being bulletproof and superhuman. Yeah, I could see him be the next Black Noir. That would actually be a really good theory. Kay and Sam decide to break out uh, all the people who were tortured by the scientists and mainly this woman because, you know, th- she was creating this sort of virus that would kill all soups and make it contagious. And, of course, there was this one doctor and and once, uh, and when um, Mallory, Murray, and Jordan were at this woman's house trying to find some evidence... They overheard this drunk doctor talk about the plan, and this is where she, Mal- Marie, realizes she needs to talk to Victoria Newman about this. And Victoria Newman says to her that she'll deal with it. And of course, she makes a deal with the doctor, without, but of course, Victoria Newman has to make his head explode. And now she has this virus that could kill all soups, and she possibly could use it, but it might kill her as well. Again, we have to find out more about it in The Boys Season 4, because... That's definitely going to be a big impact and a big deal. But anyway, back to with Sam and Kate. So Sam and Kate decide to release all of the patients that were tortured by the doctors and cause mayhem at the school, kill anyone who isn't a soup. And of course, it's up to Emma, Jordan, Audrey, and Murray to stop it. Of course, um, Audrey comes in late because he was visiting his dad in the hospital. Well, Vought International building that has a hospital for the soups. And at the end of it, Homelander shows up and he confronts, well, the ones who are actually doing the good stuff. And, you know, Homelander's like, what kind of animal are you attacking one of your own? And Mari's like, what? And then Homelander eye lasers her and then she wakes up and she's been out for quite a while. And her, Jordan... Audrey and Emma are locked up in a cell without doors. And Sam and Kate are, you know, around the news with the whole massacre going on. It was told that, oh, it was actually uh, the other four, not these two. Even though we all know that that's not the truth. So, you know, thanks to Homelander, the good guys are locked up. But, you know, I guess Homelander is more interested in these two, really. But, you know, it's Homelander and all. So I'm curious of what they're going to do with Kay and Sam. Hopefully they'll be around for The Boys Season 4, or maybe they'll come again in Gen V Season 2. Who knows? I really hope they use them for Season 4 of The Boys, especially Sam, if he is actually going to be the next Black Noir. And Gen V Season 1 ends on a cliffhanger, with us wondering how are they going to get out. And of course, the Billy Butcher out of the credits cameo, pretty much saying, what a bunch of cunts, getting you all pumped up. 
And that's my review for Gen V Season 1. Season 2 won't come out until next year. Unfortunately, lots of superhero content's not coming out till next year. So, we pretty much have a bit of filler for superhero content. But, I mean, we are getting the rest of Invincible Season 2, which I'm going to review along with the first half. And we're getting The Boys Season 4 and a bunch of other stuff that I'm also excited for. But anyway, for my inclusion, I'm going to give Gen V a 10 out of 10. It's just as good of the... It's just as good as The Boys, if not equally great. I highly recommend you watch it. So yeah, 10 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time when I review Invincible Season 2.